Hi, I'm Chiku. I'm Udi boy. This is Frederick. This is Udi box. Yeah. So we are going to talk about programming in Excel or Google Sheets or LibreOffice or any spreadsheet programming interface engine. Um, a lot of people think that um, people who program in Excel and financial companies, etc., do not really program, but uh, if you think about it, writing anything in Excel is equivalent to coding something. When you code a program, what do you do? You have an input and you have an output and you have something which processes stuff in the middle. The exact same thing is happening over here. Like, suppose this is a trial screen which I have. I write, I write a number here and uh, in the next screen I write twice of that number. That's what I want to compute. I, I change the input cell, I change the input, the output changes. It's what a program does. Right? So, uh, what, what else are we going to show today, Neet? So, this is uh, functional programming on a very basic level. Uh, functional programming is uh, one of the paradigms of programming where uh, computation is based on functions and not statements. Uh, functions meaning like we wrote we had an a data cell here which is 3 and we wrote uh, a1 into 2 so into 2 is one function which we defined and we got some output and from that we can uh, chain more functions in the next cell i can write uh, b1 plus 5 let's say so that gives me an output again so i have chained into 2 and plus 5 which are two functions and if i change the first cell uh, first data which is the input it will change uh, my output uh, so this is something where everyone is familiar with in excel uh, where you write uh, formulas and you can base them on cells and those cells can also be represented by formulas and yeah and what, what, what I just did on screen what you just saw is one of the uh, best features of Excel you can just drag cells and the formula copies it into the other cells respectively so if you have a, a, a data set which and you want to apply a similar function on all of them not the exact same function a similar function on all of them in some cases the same function as well then you can simply drag the formula in all those cells and it applies so uh, we are going to do some particular examples over here so that you exactly understand what's going on and what is the power of it so uh, I'm, I'm going to switch over to the screen and uh, uh, well, we are going to try direct product. So, suppose you have uh, three three words, three nouns and three adjectives and you want to generate a list of words which has noun and adjectives. So, uh, well, what do you do? You simply, uh, in, in Haskell, which is a functional programming language, it is simply a single line of code after you define your things. In Excel, this is, or Google Sheets, this is a bit more complicated, but on the other hand, uh, there are other applications which are complicated to write in Haskell and traditional function programming languages, but become far easier in Excel. Those are the applications which spreadsheets are used for every single day. Like if you want to create a program to manage your students, their marks, and you want to deal with statistics for them, you may have to write a program where you have to define different objects which will store the marks and different uh, name and gender of your students but here it's all just visual and obvious you just have to enter stuff into cells and it fires along it's but, a very great ui for uh, programming id yeah you directly um, see what's yeah, going you on. see what is going on and you see the input and output directly without so, having to run your program yeah, yeah, we can do a very simple example where we show the factorial of a number, how to compute that. So, traditionally, if you want to compute factorial in C, you would use a for loop. There are better ways, but a very simple example is a for loop where you have one variable as 1, initialize, let's say a equals 1, and then a into, uh, 
one to two into three. That's how you loop. So that's what we'll do in Excel instead today. So I initialize one data cell as one. A one we got. And so that data cell holds the iteration number, uh, and which is basically a column holds the iteration number, and let's say b column holds the factorial. Factorial. So the next iteration will be previous cell plus one. So that's what the formula will write. A one plus one goes into cell A two, and then I drag it over till ten columns, and I get. Uh, my it, uh, iteration number, which is one to ten, yeah. and my factorial will be the previous factorial. So factorial of n minus one into n, which is b one into a two, which is in b two cell, and then I can drag it over. So I get my factorial calculation till one to ten. Yeah. Voila. So one. Okay. So you you might already be seeing one drawback, as you might say, that uh, if you want to calculate the factorial of ten, then you're having to calculate the factorial of all the intermediate numbers. But uh, this is why you don't use Excel to calculate factorial. This is an mm -hmm. example. But the it it just shows how powerful and easy it is to do things as compared to traditional programming where you have to define all the data types and then write the whole procedure of doing things. But here you can just put a formula in there. Uh, we have a more complicated example. Uh, I think I'll first introduce what a bubble sort is, and then I think you can explain how to do that at an Excel. Yeah. So, uh, well, you can you're going to sort numbers. It's a, it's a traditional thing in uh, programming that you want to sort numbers, and uh, so. On my screen, let's say we have numbers from. Uh, I think I should just uh, delete everything. Else. So on my screen, say we have numbers from one to ten different numbers. And so uh, how does bubble sort works? So bubble sort goes on the idea of how bubbles float up up in the water because they're lighter than other stuff. So here you can imagine larger numbers being heavier, so they kind of they kind of get to the bottom of the whole water, and uh, the smaller numbers float up. So, for example, here I'll select one, and then I'll compare one with four. So it's smaller than four, so it just stays there. Uh, now I'll compare. Now I'll start with four, and now I'll compare four with two. So now. Uh, four is definitely larger than two, so two comes up and four floats down, and then four is also larger than three, so you know four goes even below. But four is not larger than eight, so you know eight just stays there, and then five and six and so on. And then in the next iteration, I I look at eight and then I see that okay, eight can float down even more, and I bring eight there and I bring five here and six here. So this is how I did it manually, okay. But now, uh, what if you wanted to write an Excel program to do this? Meet, do you want to show them how? Uh, so, bubble sort traditionally is done using two nested for loops. The inner for loop loops over uh, the array which we want to sort and checks if the current element is greater than the second uh, next element. Uh, if it gr if it's greater, it swaps. Else, it doesn't. Uh, and there is a outer for loop which runs n times. So if you run the inner for loop n times, you are guaranteed to get a sorted array. N is the number of elements of the array. So that's what we are doing in Excel, and we are implementing the loop similar to the factorial example we showed, which is just dragging the whole formula multiple times. Uh, so in the screencast, you can see. Uh, super index which goes from 1 to 90 which is the outer loop outer loop index and uh, inner loop index which goes from 1 to 10 and repeats every 1 to 10 and repeat so what that will do is uh, using the index it will check if the first so index 
let the index be i so it will check ith item with the uh, i plus 1 item and decide whether it needs to swap or not so that is being computed in the decider column okay so we start with 8 and 10 initially so it decides that 8 is not greater than 10 so it won't swap then we move on to uh, 10 and 5 and it decides it needs to swap so next column there is 5 and 10 which is swap again goes on with 10 and 7 10 and 6 and you can see 10 moving forward ahead till the last row and because 10 is the largest element in the array it moves on till the end so you can technically see bubbles rising so, up yeah the, the lighter the lighter elements rise towards the left and and the heavier elements towards the right uh, similarly you can see 9 after that after we finish the iterations with 10 8 starts to bubble up towards the right and it stops at 9 uh, and then 9 starts to bubble up that you can see that uh, if one element hits a larger bubble uh, it will push the bubble ahead so that's how bubble sort works it doesn't take one element till the end it just uh, sees the uh, current element doesn't it doesn't uh, matter which element it is so first 8 still moves till 9 and then stops then 9 moves ahead and after that 8 will move ahead yeah. till the end so it is a pretty good visualization of the bubble sort which you couldn't have uh, obtained in uh, any normal procedural language yeah i mean which you there, can see yeah. there are uh, well there are obviously visual illustrations of bubble sort which act as educational tools to explain it but then all those visualization tools have to be created separately from the bubble sort algorithm itself yes this does bubble sort and, and visualizes shows you at the same time what is visualizes going on. it at the same time uh, I'll scroll to the bottom and you can see the last row we have sorted elements completely. Yep. And you see a nice diagram in the, in the in the latest iteration two and one are swapped. Yes. So it goes to the and yeah, that's kind of it. I, 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 so just to make it look good, we actually hide the first three columns. Yeah. And uh, then I'll, I'll change the elements in the first row and let's, let, let's see what happens. So, say some, say some numbers. Meet that zero. Meet what is the phone number? Meet? Nine six one nine. Yeah. Two two one two four zero. And okay, the last one. Yeah, so you can see how it dynamically changes the output. And at the end, you have the sorted array. So that's just one of the many things which you can do with uh, Excel or uh, Google Sheets or spreadsheets in general. That uh, we we would like people to explore how spreadsheet programming is like normal programming. You still have to get creative around stuff, and uh, you have to design things as input and output, and so on. And uh, yeah, that's about it. One concern may be that code may not look as good as it does in. Uh, normal languages so it may, may not look good semantically because we are naming cell we are referencing cells and they have strange and weird numbers but then and letters but then most but of what the we have done is we have named uh, cells and ranges so it is kind of exactly like using variable names so uh, the rows we have hid were named super index index and decider and that's what the names we are using in the formulas so 
just focus on uh, if you just focus on one cell and show anyone formula yeah yeah they they can they can already see it okay so you can okay so even this might look a bit complicated but for larger programs you can always you can always come up with uh, Good. yeah you can you can define one com- long string of function as one function and then you can reuse it that's what people yeah. do so in in large organizations in companies which do a lot of sales and finance they at, they actually reference other sheets okay so you you do not have to reference cells in the same sheet you can reference cells in another sheet which is part of the same file but you can also reference cells in another file so there are com- companies have some companies have produced this ho- whole network of uh, just spreadsheet files which keep referencing each other like there's a folder and inside there are multiple folders each have multiple different excel files which do different things so the cell formulas can actually reference other files which is which is a great thing which allows you to create quite a lot of complex programs so one very interesting application which we had seen i think we had seen it on that day uh, some person had uh, made a spreadsheet on a network shared pc and he distributed another spreadsheet to uh, all the client pcs and the client pcs reference the uh, network based spreadsheet and u- using that simple thing they could build a simple chat interface for multiple pcs on excel purely on excel yeah so there is no limit to what you can do in excel so it doesn't have you don't have to limit yourself to data based applications so so there, there is actually a researcher in uh, delft university uh, and uh, her name is felian hamans and she works with end user programming and she kind of has very great research on spreadsheet programming she's kind of trying to spread the word when we when we first discovered that we could do such great things on excel it's not just a tool which they t- teach us in school and it's not used anymore in college um uh, so some 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 of the things which she uh, has done for hackathons in in one hackathon her team actually made a turing machine in in excel right which proves that excel is turing complete so you know uh, it kind of mathematically proves that you can actually compute anything in excel any program which you can write in any other language can be written it's, that's kind of its uh, power uh so felian havans in one of her talks mentions how um, so the way it works in software industry is sup- uh, suppose you have a company which does sales and finance which is where spreadsheets are used the most and they have created a prototype of what they want what kind of combination they want in excel and they go to a software engineer and they say can you make this into a nice graphical user interface program where uh, you know our our employees can work and uh, it doesn't have to be an excel sheet and so on and they say okay uh, give us this much time and give us this much money and it'll be done and then they realize keep maybe it's not worth it because sometimes it takes more time than they have already promised and they eventually have to spend more and more money and uh, well software is expensive so you spend a lot of a lot of time and money and uh, well you would think that the small prototype which you wrote in a spreadsheet works better than that so why would you have to pay for it so yeah that's what people think and, and they they're not wrong in thinking to an extent ki a lot of programming can simply be done on excel and we don't really need to use a lot of software packages for trivial stuff uh, hope you liked it please leave your suggestions and comments and questions in the in the comment section below and uh, we we recently launched a wncc wiki which is a single forum of knowledge on whatever you want to know about programming one one so you can see the link to the wiki down here and the link to our main website also over here and like share and subscribe